Hey, hey, ho, ho, and welcome to the Red Beard Show. Another fucking nice day in paradise. Not so freaking cold out no more. It's warmed up a few degrees up here in the Great White North, eh? And uh, joined again by some lovely ladies. Thanks again to my sponsors, Vancouver Seed Bank, for providing me with the number one genetics. If you need number one genetics, order from VancouverSeedBank.ca. They ship anywhere. So if you're in Taiwan and you're tuning into the show, I hope you've ordered your seeds. And I mentioned that because there was a fella in Taiwan, but in the chat from Taiwan. So hey folks, thanks for tuning in and joining the chat. And uh, today's show is about spoons. It's kind of a show for the newbies, I guess. Or if you aren't a newbie at glass, uh, a chance for you to maybe refine your skills or catch something that uh, I've missed. Uh, maybe you can teach me something. So if you're a glass blower watching this, let me know what I'm doing wrong. I did teach uh, myself a lot of these tricks. Of course, I had help with my brother, my mentor, Sibo of Irie Island Glass. And uh, anyway, here we are in the shop. Another fucking beautiful day. Got the volcano bag filling up behind me. Just found a stash of nugs I stashed on myself. This is some lemon skunk. It's been curing for about six months just lovely and it's good medicine and if you have a hard time finding good medicine I got good news for you I've recently been sponsored by not one but two amazing sponsors both of which make the finest extracts I've ever had the privilege of trying so I'd like to give a shout out and a thank you to kind selections for their sponsorship these guys make some serious nice extracts and as well to Shatterbeard extracts and uh, I just received Shatterbeards uh, in the mail today, so I've been testing it out. I gotta tell ya, Kind Selections was so fucking good. I pretty much finished all my samples from uh, last week's show. So uh, Kind Selections, I'm gonna need some more of that extract, I tell ya. If you wanna find these guys, get online and hunt them out. They are available for medical patients throughout Canada. They will ship across Canada. There might be a very small shipping fee, I'm told, but not for orders over 100 bucks, I think, or something like that. So, it's good news. I encourage you to check these guys out. And I always want to say thank you to my local grow shop, Better Than Nature South. Thank you, Sandy, for hooking me up with great deals, great products, and always the best service. Right here in front of me, I've got some clones. They actually came from the Kind Selection crew. And, uh... Just some lovely plants here. I'll introduce you to them in a little bit. Maybe you can hazard some guesses as to what we have here. First of all, let's hazard a guess whether this is an indica or a sativa. Maybe you can all put that in your heads because I've been trying to teach you a little bit about grass growing and each variety and each strain's uh, characteristics and qualities and, and traits. So. Do you know? I'm going to reveal. We have an indica, we have another indica, and this is a sativa cross. You can tell by the plant structure. The leaves are a little bit narrower. The nodes are a little bit wide, longer on this one. This one's a beautiful plant. I'm really proud of this one. Really happy. I wish I had a room full of this girl here. Anyway. Safety first. Just having a good uh, paper bag before we get started. So for today's show, I thought, how do we get started here? Well, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to pretend that you've just ordered your glass, you've just got it in the mail, and you're looking at this box of these tubes and you're like, okay, now what? What the fuck do I do with this? It's a five foot length of tubing. This is one and a half inch, which is I think 31 millimeters roughly, and it's a heavy wall tube. And the first thing we need to do is break this down to manageable size. It's too unwieldy. You can't make a pipe off to of the end of this. I have seen videos uh, of guys working with a section of this tube in hand and then working pipes just off the end as they go. They work the four inches as they go. So you could do it that way, cutting the tube into say three bits, holding them on by hand and turning it. But what I like to do is pull it down and make yourself some handles. Now, there's two ways of doing that, pulling points and welding blow tubes. And I guess what I'll do is show you both of those 
I like points. That's how I learn. And I encourage you to practice points. The, the advantage to points is you really gain a skill. A skill of melting glass, turning glass, all of that. So, and I do think that today we are having, yes, we are giving away more seeds in the chat room today. So if you're watching this show live, get into the chat room, stay tuned. We've got uh, Vancouver Seed Bank in the chat room going to give away some seeds for y'all. And you don't want to miss that because they've got the goods. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is pull a point. I'm going to plug in my ventilation system here. Make some noise. Okay, so hopefully you're familiar enough with your torch. I'm not going to go through all the different flame sizes. But just to sum up, you want a nice big flame for this first cut. I'm just placing the tube into the flame. It's halfway down the tube, and I'm just slowly rotating. I don't even, I'm just making sure it's in the flame. Make sure you don't drift left or right. And you're just staying in that one spot, turning nice and slow. A mistake that a lot of newbies make is turning the glass too fast. If you, if you ever have any doubts, just go look at some YouTube videos of glass lathes. You're basically trying to replicate a lathe's movement. And they don't turn fast, not like a wood lathe. So now I've melted it. Now I can just melt that closed off, pop two holes and get the blow tubes on. Or I can pull myself two hollow handles just by slowly pulling them apart, like so. So I'm just still pulling and very slowly turning. I'm talking, oh, maybe uh, one rotation a second, not even. Okay. So now we've got to cut it in half, and I'll use the flame for that, because my hands are full. So we'll just set that in the flame, still turning slightly because they are still soft up here at the shoulder. So now we have our point, the shoulder, this will be the blank, and then we'll pull another point off the end. So you do need to open the ends of your point, so we'll just do that for a quick sec by blowing it into the flame. Sometimes it's hard to tell if the glass is in the flame, it's kind of hard to see. And a trick to that is looking at the, the glass bouncing off of the, off of the, uh, the flame bounces off the glass. Okay, so we've got the point pulled. Let's just let those cool down for a sec. Turn up my oxygen concentrator here. Cheers, y'all. a nice cure. Tasty. So if you haven't seen it, let me do a little bit of show and tell while we're waiting for that tube to cool off. Looky, looky what I made last week. Isn't that awesome? You can really see the colors when you see uh, the black background of my sweater. The silver and gold fume. It was a pretty big piece got to be about uh, 16 inches, maybe a bit more, 18 inches tall. And there is the drop down and the dome. The dome's got the honeycomb. Now this honeycomb I showed and I made the day of the uh, honeycomb and harvest episode. The uh, bottom of this piece has, uh, the can has uh, nine bitch windows, all fumed in different patterns attached on the bottom. We've got the four pillar twist. I think it turned out pretty good. And that's going to a good friend of mine, Jade, who is an activist in the Vancouver area. He's done a lot of work for our community. And uh, thanks for waiting on this project, Jade. It took me a little while to get to it, but I think she's worth it. Booyah! And of course, uh, I always make a flower bowl to go with them. So there's a lovely flower bowl with a bit of lovely fumed horn on there influenced and uh, inspired by Kevin Nail for sure on that one and a nice uh, nice dish
And yes, I made a dabber. No, not, I don't make a lot of dabbers, but I did the nice dabber there. A little spatula end on it. So she can scoop those dabs. Speaking of scooping dabs, I think it's time we have a nice little dab. This dab is brought to you by, oh, let's say the first one. Ooh. First dab on this show will be brought to you by Kind Selections, Wapa Shatter. And it's almost the end of my Wapa Shatter. I do have some space wax left. And I'm hitting this now because I am going to hit all three of Shatter Beards next. And I tell you, all of these extracts I've got are top, top notch. And I think what's important to note here is the, the uh, effort they put into purging the product. So if you want to try these extracts, if you haven't already, make sure you ask your provider how well purged they are. There's a certain process that all this medicine needs to go through to take out the solvents. So, oh, and I came up with a nifty trick this week too. I've been keeping my glass nail in the kiln when I'm not using it. It's pretty awesome. I've cracked way less nails. So now it's ready to heat. Let's hit the end of that. And then I'm going to make a spoon for y'all. See what the heck we're talking about. The 12 step program. Oh, I picked up my rest. Cheers, y'all. Delish. So now I gotta get that nail back in the kiln so it stays hot. Be ready for the next dab. <coughs> Woo! All right. So we pulled points. Now we've got to pull a prep. <coughs> so now if you haven't pulled a point and you're gonna do it the other way, well, let's just show you what that is. I'm gonna remove my pulled point. And we're going to glue on a, a uh, blow tube. So the opposite way of doing it, the other way of doing it, is you've just pulled that tube in half and it looks like this. You've just melted it in half. Well, first you need to pop a hole. So let's do that. Nice and simple. Watch, uh, watch my tube here. Now I've just taken the uh, this old blow tube or uh, any type of rod and I'm just peeling off any unwanted glass, any excess glass down here at the point, at the shoulder. I've just reamed it roughly, uh, nice, it's open roughly about half an inch. And now I'm going to take <coughs> a piece of 12 mil blow pipe that you've sectioned off and I actually have a piece here that comes just like it comes out of the box. And to section that off, you take your little scratch knife and you're just gonna scratch the glass, lick that spot, and then snap it. The saliva actually works on a molecular scale, spreading the crack. So we got that piece, and we're just gonna go ahead and uh, weld it on there. So to, before I do that, I'm just going to flare the end of this really quick. I've got this carbon block down in front of me. I'm just going to spin it onto the corner of that. And it just flares it open like this. Basically using that as a tool. Using it as a carbon reamer. So now we'll just go ahead and weld it on. getting both sides, both pieces hot where I'm going to attach them, nice and liquid, a touch, out of the flame, a slight pull away, and you can see the uh, weld going uh, much smoother as you pull away, and there you have it. So now we're going to let that harden up, and I'm just going to go ahead and pull another point, sectioning off about three or four inches of a prep. That's what we'll use to make a spoon. So this is all just prep work, getting ready to actually make the spoon. So if you've just begun this glass blowing journey, you're gonna to wanna to practice your prep work oh, a few thousand times. Full points, lots and lots of points, until you're perfect. 
Okay. So I just heated that up again. Just demonstrate the pulling of a point. It's kind of unconscious to me now. I don't even really look at it. Go by the feel of it. Use the pulse loop. All right. So now it's hardening up. You can feel it. I'll just burn off this side. Oh, sorry, girl. Okay, there we have it. Before I set this tube down, I'm just going to open the end again. So that's ready to use for the next one. Alrighty, 416. It's a good thing I got some vapor ready. Okay, so now I suggest when you're learning this for the first time, maybe try it out on a clear spoon first. Instead of applying a lot of different designs and then, well, that's all good practice, but I, I like to suggest working on one aspect of your spoon first. And maybe first work on a clear, the shape of the spoon. And then once you have that down, add some color, add some design, add a fume, add frit, a number of things you can do. So, oh yeah, I want to show you the 12 steps. I actually wrote it out here and it's roughly 12 steps I'm gonna hold this up to the camera it's on the back of a free mark poster the, uh, for the rally but uh, here's the 12 steps now I'm gonna try and get it so that later on you newbies can push pause and read this list all over again it's it's written for my girlfriend so hopefully it I haven't even double checked this, so we'll just scroll up slowly. And with the wonders of technology, you guys can watch this show. Whoops, stay on camera. You know, 20 or 30 times and get that. So there you go. There's your 20 steps, and now I'll read it to you. Punty up. Pull the middle. Makes the shaft. Get your mouthpiece, Maria. Take your punty off and the nipple. Heat the bowl end and blow around. Sag slightly. That's not even really a step. It's just what you do as that's being done. Bulge and pop your bowl hole. Push your bowl. Flatten your bottom. Add three dots, because that's the Redbeard way. Blow out your carb and pop it. Remove your mouthpiece and finish that. All right, so there's your steps. I hope you got that. You memorized those already, I hope. Now for the tools of the trade. I will be using a claw. A claw holder is this tool here. It's uh, it's a pretty simple tool. You can go without it, but uh, to go without it, you will need well tweezers, a heat pad. Best thing to have is the claw. You'll need some tweezers. You'll need a bull push. That's made out of carbon, graphite. What else? We'll be using eight mil rod for the dots and, uh, and for the punty and we'll be using 32 mil tubing for the prep. Am I missing anything? Yes, I'm missing a dab and this dab is brought to you by Shatterbeard. Brother, I am stoked on your dabs. This just arrived today and uh, you wrote me a quick note in the package which I left upstairs. I wanted to read it out on the show because it was really cute and really nice. But uh, to sum it up, it is vacuum purged with uh, much attention to the preserving the terpenes, I think you said. And I can see your point because it's really, uh, you can really taste the strain uh, in, of each of these. I've got the uh, organic purple kush, which I'm told is his favorite, Shatterbird's favorite, Rockstar, and the Afghani I wanted to say Afghani bull rider, but this is Afghani hash plant. And so here, I can show you up in front of the camera. Very nice, very nice looking. I'm told I don't want to touch it too much with my fingers. I'm really learning about a lot about the dabs as I go here as well. I've been uh, taking dabs and making the uh, rigs for, gosh, about 10 years. But there's always a lot to learn. And this vacuum purging, 
I'm learning a lot about that. The number of flips, the temperature. It's a real science and more even, I'd say it's a freaking art because uh, it's got to be done properly and that's why I don't make the butane hash myself. I don't have the tools, the know-how, the time, the patience, the technique. So kudos, Shatterbeard and selections. But right now this dab is brought to you by Shatterbeard. So let's get my, uh, it's got to be 420, 421, how about that? I'm a minute late as usual. Get my nail out of the kiln. Isn't that brilliant? Why didn't I think of that before? Save me so many nails. I'm hitting out of the uh, gathering collab bomb. Woohoo! With uh, Hashmaster Cut's first ever dome. There's a story behind that. Cheers. Beautiful. The flavor is beautiful, intense. It's just like fresh nugs. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, I should mention uh, he gets his uh, supplies, the uh, raw material, from an award winner, <laughs> an award winning grower. So, cheers, Shatterbeard. Fucking hey, that's delicious. Got my favorite beer and my favorite beer mug. My favorite beer mug pipe. <coughs> Today I'm just polishing off this Red Racer IPA. Freaking delicious beer. All right, all right. I kept you waiting long enough. Let's make a bloody spoon, shall we? All right. I hope you're paying attention now. Here we go. So, <coughs> I'm going to read aloud the list as we go here. Normally, I try not to keep paper too close to the flame, but that should be safe there. Maybe you can read along. We should have the bouncing ball. Someone should technically put that in there. Okay. So, I've got my prep ready. I've got my punty cut. It's about uh, 14 inches or so. <coughs> I'm gonna fasten the punty onto the end of the tubing. I'm gonna make sure it's on the center of the bloody end of the tubing. You don't need it to be turning like this. You always want it to be on a good axis. So let's attach that. Look, it's way off. What do you do? Oh, well, it's still soft. You make it straight. Give a slight tug, my hands apart, and it's on a perfect axis. Now I just need to warm up the tube from one end to the other. So I'm slowly just working my way to the right. And actually, if I had this piece in the kiln ahead of time, that could save a good five seconds here. And when you're making dozens and dozens of spoons a day, five seconds on each spoon adds up. So as you learn these, you're gonna refine them and get your time down. Okay, so I got the whole prep preheated. So let's start here, punty up, got it. Now we need to pull the middle into the shaft. Now it's actually, I'm gonna talk a lot, I guess. It's not exactly middle, it's middle towards the blow tube, uh, about an inch of tube. So fully half of the prep is for the spoon of the bowl end, half of the prep is for the bowl, and half of the prep is for the shaft and the mouthpiece. So first we're gonna make the shaft, starting at half and heating up about a, this much of the prep. Got it? I hope so. All right. I'm just gonna heat the middle until it glows. Now, it being all clear glass, you don't need to heat it up super liquid. You just need to get it hot enough to move. You're not working in any color. You're not, uh, you know, you don't need to apply a lot of heat here. Just enough for it to glow. Now hopefully you were turning it nice and evenly, but you don't have any hot spots. And we're just gently gonna pull that out. And yes, there is a stage in this process where the spoon looks a lot like a cock. We're getting penile on it, I know. So there's things you can do to prevent that. I tend to squat and up my Maria up front of the mouthpiece. I like a bulge up front so you don't knock your teeth out on the bloody front of the spoon. That's one good reason for it. So what I like to do is heat this at the mouthpiece next. A nice narrow band. And I'm gonna make a Maria, which means it's gonna be a squat bubble. 
So I just gave it a little pop and I'm pushing my hands together gently as I rotate. It's really important that you continue to rotate evenly. I'm just applying a touch more heat at the very top of the Maria, the high side, just squatting it up just a little more. There, that's pretty good. So just let that uh, stiffen up just enough so it doesn't lose its shape and we'll go over to the bowl end because the next step is to remove the punty and the nipple. Now that means any, the, any scar that's left after you remove the punty. You generally just remove a little bit of the tubing with the punty. Like so, okay? Now we need to heat up this whole section of glass. And I am using the, the Mirage size flame for this. If you have a smaller torch, well use a smaller prep so it's not too much work to heat this up. You can jig back and forth to heat up the whole end of it. And it's very important that you have a nice even heat. Okay, so the next step after I heat it, I'm going to blow it round and then give it a slight sag. Okay, so now it's like honey on a stick. That's like stage three liquid. So just kind of let it, just keep turning for a second to let a skin develop on the surface. That helps keep it more stable. You got a couple seconds here. Now I'm going to stop rotating when I see my shaft and my mouthpiece and everything straight and I'm letting it droop this way. Now I'm gonna put it up in the air and puff through it. Or into it. And that's gonna blow out the bowl. And I'm keeping an eye on it, making sure I don't blow it too thin. You look through the glass at the horizon and you can tell how thick it is. So now I'm just letting that stiffen up. And I'm not really turning it, you could turn it, but really I'm letting it sag just a little more. And that sag is essential to a good spoon. This is the ledge that's going to catch any ashes before it heads into your mouth. And the bowl is going to be pushed past that ledge so there's a little a little well in there that's going to catch any ashes and soot. Okay, so the next step is to bulge and pop the bowl hole. Now, locating the bowl hole is essential like to have it nice and straight. You don't want a, a wonky crooked bowl. Well, maybe you do. Maybe that's what you're going for. But I'm trying to make a nice straight pipe. So I hold it out in front of me and I locate the side that's the straightest because I've sagged it, it's not symmetrical. So that's where I want the bowl. I mark it with my thumb. I place my thumb right on that tube right there. So now I just kind of with I can with my mind's eye draw the line up the tube. And now I know I'm hitting that at the right spot. After I've heated it a pinpoint flame, I just double check it. Is it in the right spot? It is. Now I like to go ahead and bulge it. Now that's the first step to a bowl is bulging it up. Now a very, very important note. The bowl is ahead of this bulge. It's not on the back side. It's facing the mouthpiece. You want your bowl pushed this way. You don't want, like when you're smoking your pipe, you want the bowl, if anything, leaning forward. Never leaning back. I think a bowl that's leaning back is uh, uh, it's ugly. You can't see what you're doing. The bowl's like facing away from you. So uh, make sure it's forward of half, just slightly. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pop that bowl by holding it into the flame and applying pressure. and blow it out nicely, okay? You could ream it here for a second too. You want it to be slightly oversized. That hole is about, oh, I don't know, let me guess, uh, three millimeters, four millimeters, maybe even five. So now what I'm going to do is go around that hole with the hole being upright, and I'm just heating around in a circle. I go around three times, I switch sides, go around three times this way. I switch sides because it's also slightly sagging to the left, now to the right. And I just go around that hole. I'm st 
thing not into the hole because the hole this makes the hole shrink. If the hole shrinks too much, you can blow through it. But basically, I'm heating around that hole. I got my bowl push ready. And what I'm going to do now is keep an eye on the hole. When it's the perfect size, I'm going to place it down on my pad and I'm going to push the bowl in. And by pushing it in, it's just pushing it. You see the angle? Not straight down towards the back. Now, you don't want your bowls to be massive. Some folks do. Those are fairly much the novelty bowls. Those are what the 16 year old kids want. I think a medium sized bowl is best so our connoisseur friends can just pack their little green hits. But mostly you need it to get just to this ledge here so that the smoke is going to go down and it's going to stick and any ashes are going to go down into that trap that we made. So the next step is, okay, so I've got my bowl hole done. It's perfectly the right size in the bottom there. My bowl hole's nice. See how it's leaning towards the mouthpiece there? It's not even level. Now the next step is flatten the bottom. So I turn it over. Now to accentuate that ledge even more, see how I've held the pipe upside down and facing this way. And I'm just heating it with a pinpoint flame right on the bottom of the bowl. And this way the glass is going to sag that way. It's going to pronounce that ledge even more. Make sure your graphite pad's clean so you don't just pick up more debris. And we just come down and flatten it. Now, that's common sense, but I'll maybe make sure I mention it. When you go to flatten it, make sure this part, your mouthpiece, is on the counter, on the pad, and then set down this piece. Okay, it's got to go like that because otherwise, if I've seen people just push it here, well then it's not gonna sit flat. Okay, so we got the bottom flat. Now we need my signature, three dots. Mostly, uh, as well as being a simple signature I've been doing for, oh gosh, I can say almost 20 years. It's going on 17 years of these spoons. But it's just what I've always done and it just makes a very nice finger grip. A place for your thumb to rest, or your finger, depending on what side, what hand you're using. So it's good so you don't slip and drop your pipe. And it also works good as my little, uh, my little signature I always do. So three dots, real easy to put on. I just apply, pull away, put it back in the flame, and I do this little ice cream finish, I call it or you just like soft ice cream, you just swirl it off and pull away. And I do that because basically the, the marble, the dot is finished after that. I don't have to go in and heat it round. It's ready to go. So I just saw a little bit of fogged up glass here on the ledge. It's called deep vitrification. And as long as it's not heavy deep vit, you can just burn it off or melt it in by reheating the glass and making sure it's totally clear and see-through. So now that we have that done, we need to pop our carb, and then the last step is removing our mouthpiece. So the carb placement. You do not want your carb too close to the top of the bowl. If you've never used, if you've used pipes before, if you want it to be down low enough that the top of your thumb's not gonna get burnt by the, by the lighter, and uh, you don't want it too far down so that the, the hot air and the flame can go right through and out the car bowl and burn your thumb. So there's a middle ground there. It's kind of up towards the rim, but still giving yourself a little buffer. It's always forward facing. So by applying, heating it and applying pressure with my mouth, I'm just bringing the air to the surface. Now I bring it into the flame and pop it. So by bulging it out first, I make sure it's in the right spot, it's come out from the pipe a little bit. There's an extra step you could do here, which is called the blown out carb, which is a really awesome thing to do. It's basically heating up a blob of glass on the rod. And just maybe an inch of rod, eight millimeter rod. Just get yourself on the end of the really liquid, like this. I'm just gonna pop it right down where I have that car and wait just a second now I'm gonna blow and pull that rod at the same time 
like so. And that blew the air up the center of that rod, of that marble I just drew on. Now if this wasn't a clear spoon, I want to add that I don't normally top the hole ahead of time. I usually just bring it to the surface, add that blob of glass, and then blow up through the marble. But it didn't matter with clear glass because there's no pattern to interrupt. So that's a blown out carb. So I've just added a marble and blown the air right through it. It's kind of nice. It keeps your thumb away from the flame. Not enough people are doing the blown out carbs, myself included. Uh, just for the 5-10 seconds it takes there. And also sometimes the shape. You don't really always want this uh, big marble sticking off the side. There you go. So now I'm going to take advantage of one of my most important tools, the kiln. I haven't got, I bet you I can touch this mouthpiece. See that? That's pretty dang cool. If I go in there with a torch, very likely it's going to crack and break off. Save yourself that heartache, get it into the kiln. If you don't have a kiln, get a kiln. That's all I'm going to say about that. You're wasting your time if you don't have a kiln blowing borosilicon glass. I did it for uh, a couple months when I first began, not even, a couple weeks maybe it was. And uh, I was doing spoons into vermiculite and then taking them over to my buddy's uh, place to anneal in his kiln uh, after every few days. And I was pain in the ass. You crack so much glass, it's just not worth it. Oh yeah. So, I gotta try another one of these dabs. So, I want to try the organic purple kush. Now I was gonna, I had a little chuckle when I saw the organic. It certainly was organic before we poured all that non-organic butane through it. But I'm glad you put the organic vacuum purge on it. <laughs> but anyway, or, made with organic flowers. I, I gotta say that's hugely important to me. These ladies are all 100% organic. There's neem oils you can use for pests. There's soaps, there's other bugs. In fact, maybe we'll take a minute and talk about these plants here behind me. Now that we've gone through the 12-step program of making a spoon. Alright, so again, this dab is brought to you, brought to me, by Shatterbeard Extracts. Available online, search them out on the old Facebooks and interwebs and Instagrammers. Now, I didn't put my nail in the kiln, so... I hope I don't crack it. So here's a lesson in glass as well. So if you don't want something to crack, like that mouthpiece, we're going to introduce it to the flame very slowly and way out here with a very bushy flame with lots of propane like that. Ah, uh, it's still cracked. This happened last week. We were doing nails on the fly, remember? So we're doing it again. Nails on the fly. And then we're going to make another spoon or two. I thought for fun, maybe I'll make a massive spoon. So you all can see it easily on the camera. In case any of you are hard of sight. Just got to make my little divot on the top here. I might have to get myself a titanium nail. I don't have one of those yet. Being a glass blower, I figure I got a, enough nails here in a glass. Cheers. So this is the organic purple kush. I tried it earlier. It's freaking delicious. Gotta say, you really have left those terpenes intact. It tastes so fresh. It's lovely. Job well done. All right. Where were we? Let me double check that this still thing. Hey, green light. We're still recording. How about that? Congratulations. This thing still works. Okay. So what do we have here in front of me? Well, we have some legal cannabis. Yes, it is legal. I do have a license. I am using it for medicinal reasons. This plant on the far right, 
I did get these clones, by the way, from Kind Selections. They do have some clones available here and there. Sometimes you got to have the right timing. But they're all about helping the patients. Fine medicine. There is the label. So this one is the Schnazzleberry. Just lovely. Note, I really heavily pruned the bottom branches. That's to maximize the airflow in the room underneath the buds and above the buds. I've got fans blowing underneath the canopy. It's a beautiful straight schnauzelberry. Um, I use, I have grown a, a something. I thought it was called schnizzleberry or something like that. I think it was a chimera strain. He gave it to me anyway a long time ago. That was the one that I grew in that bloody trailer. Uh, it was like a 15 foot travel trailer that I parked way out in the bush. And if you want to see it, go look at the glass gathering documentary movie on YouTube. And I, uh, they show a clip of that real quick in the movie. I, I had a lot of lights going in that sucker. And then this plant here on the left, gosh, this, I gotta tell you, this, uh, I want, this is my favorite one in the whole room. And of course, I can't find a bloody label on it. So I don't know if it's fallen off the pot, the, the tape I used, or what, but so I have compared it to the uh, similar phenotypes in the room. And while none of them have such a large tops going on, I'm like, look at that, look at that, that's beautiful. And this is about five weeks in, I believe. Four or five weeks, roughly. I'm not very good with the calendar. I go by, by the feel of it. Uh, but it's still got four weeks to go, so this is just a lovely, lovely plant. I think it's the G13. Uh, is that, no wait, the Sour G, sorry, Sour G, which is the Sour Diesel cross with G13. I also have, it, it could be, the other one it could be is an East Coast Sour Diesel, which is also the other Sativa cross I've got in my room. But just a lovely, lovely plant. Really long uh, hairs on it. It's just lovely. These ones really look like Kush, this one here. Oh, this is the BC Cherry. I flew right over this girl here. BC Cherry. And that, it's got to be a Kush, uh, uh, a variety of Kush. Uh, it's really got the structure of Kush, the smell of Kush, the taste of Kush. I always try to have a couple cushions in my garden. It really helps for pain, uh, as well as the sativa crosses I use for my appetite. So, anyway, that's what I wanted to tell you and show you about those meds. And again, if you want to get some great genetics, go to Vancouver Seed Bank and check out their catalog. Uh, I left I have a catalog here. I left it upstairs. Next week we'll look at that and pick out a few new strains. And uh, awesome. Well. Shall we make another spoon? And maybe we'll go a little faster and I'll just talk, uh, talk our way through it. Maybe let's throw a pattern on this one, shall we? So, I threw a prep in the kiln. It's this massive, uh, a massive 50 mil by five mil prep. And I thought it might be fun to make a big spoon out of that. All right, so I'm just clearing my glow tube ahead of time. It's, it's a good thing to do when you're uh, to get ready for work, clear out a bunch of glow tubes. All right, so let's see what I got here. I'm gonna need to punty it up for a sec here. Just grabbing this uh, prep out of the kiln, this blank. It looks like this. I'll have to wipe the dust off in here in a sec. I I can do that now. I'm going to weld the punty on now. Make sure that's on there nice and straight, nice and solid. Okay, I'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to weld on this blow pipe, the blow tube. It's a 12 mil blow tube. That's generally the size I use for handles. Sometimes 9 mil, but mostly 12. So just waiting until they're, they're roughly the same size. I'll go ahead and weld those two together. <coughs> All right. Let's throw a pattern on this thing real quick. <coughs> and 
what kind of pattern should we throw on it? How about a good old, uh, I was going to say wrap and rake, but maybe we won't even rake it. Looking at this color right here, that's a red, eh? What do we got down here? Oh, I love this color here. Alaska Thunder. It's a striking color. I'm just going to weld it onto the end of my 12 uh, mil rod just so I don't burn my fingertips on it. It's a little short. Okay, so we need to uh, just preheat the tube here. Burn off the label there. Okay, so I'm just going to apply some color to the outside of this tube. Right now, I guess I'm fuming the tube. This uh, color's got so much metal in it, by uh, holding it in between the tube and the flame, I can actually fume the tube with it. Not very heavy, but... Alright, so I'm just going to stick it. Go ahead and drag it off. This is a technique that... Uh, you can see all the way back to the Egyptians and uh, Romans. Well, I didn't have the tube hot enough. The color flew off there. It's really important you get the tube hot enough before you start. Being a bit impatient. But we'll just take precautions. I don't want to be all day preheating the bloody tube. I'm just heating the color stick and holding the uh, tube nearby. I can even hold it in the flame. Work that in before it flies off. So I'm being impatient. I did an episode of this uh, rapid rake it, cut it, flip it, I believe the episode's called. So you can go check out that episode for this technique. And I think I'll just keep the color around the bowl side of things here. Just having fun now. And actually by raking it, you kind of get rid of a lot of those inconsistencies there. So I think I'll just go ahead and drag a clear rod through this real quick. It's been a while since I made a spubbler. Maybe we'll turn this spoon into a bubbler. Kind of a novelty piece I've made a couple of over the years. So this is the raking part. I'm just getting the color nice and hot and we're just dragging it down. There's hundreds of ways you could uh, color a spoon. Uh, spoons often start at, you know, 10 bucks or less. So you really need to find uh, and pick a, a quick way of coloring and putting a design on the pipe. Uh, your time is worth money, but you also need it to be light. It's got to look good. It's got to sell. So, as you learn, you'll test out different things to apply. But often what I did uh, way back is I would color just the bowl end of the spoon. That saves a, a bit of time, some color, and uh, that's where all the action is. So let's just do that colored end. Just working my way around, breaking the color down. I was thinking the other day I was making spoons. It's actually uh, one of the reasons why I picked this show is because I'm right in the middle of a big Christmas order for Empies for St. Randy. And uh, I thought, I, did. I just wanted to keep making spoons. I'm on a roll. I got like freaking so many of these things to make. So that was one reason why. But as well, I'm hoping that some of you newbies pick up the spoons and start making them. Right now, a lot of stores stock imported glass simply because they can't find local glass. Nobody's doing it. Everybody's wanting to make the headies. And uh, I know Randy says it often, he, want, he, he wants spoons from everybody. 
It's the entry level glass. It's what people can really afford. And uh, I know I use a spoon still here and there, even though I have headies on the shelf. So there's a place for headies and a place for spoons. And I'm encouraging you. I guess I'm trying to pass the torch a little bit here too. Maybe I shouldn't be making so many of these spoons. You young kids should. Okay, so I've got the color applied, and it's worked in enough that it won't come off. Now what I'm going to do is start on step one, which is stick the punty on there. Now I'm going to go to the middle of the prep, and I'm going to heat that up till it's soft, and I'm going to pull out the shaft, the middle of the spoon. And here's where, if you want a large Maria, you're going to leave more glass for that. If you want a very small or a no Maria up front, the mouthpiece, then you heat up that whole front and pull it all out there. Alright. Now how big should we make this spoon, I guess is the question. To be a one person spoon, I guess we can't go more than my long arms. I was thinking it would be fun to hang a pipe up in the shop that goes all around in a loop that hangs above my head. I guess that's another episode. Alright, so I got this giant prep heated in the center. A little to the right of center. Your left, my right, towards the mouthpiece. I'm just going to pull it out so it's the length and shape I want. So we could stop there. We could stop there. We could stop there. Or we could take this thing for a little bit of a ride. Oh, my punty broke off, so I guess that's as far as we're going. That's a decent length. Let me get my punty back on. So, next step is the mouthpiece, Maria. And you know, if you really work good, if you do that shaft and center right, often you can leave what's up front just like it is right now. And I think that's what we have in this case. It's fine, it's perfect. I don't need to heat that up and shape it at all. It looks great. I'm gonna go ahead and heat up my bowl area. I'm gonna keep my punty on for this big one. Give that color a bit of a twist before I work it in. I'll probably also grab my uh, bench rollers for this giant spoon. Alright, I think we're going to need some more flame for this bad boy. Engage the mag. I don't get to use my Delta mag often enough, I tell you. That heats up the shop in a hurry. Yeah. So normally spoons wouldn't take you this long. The whole point of doing a quick hand pipe, it's your bread and butter. It's uh, a piece to make quickly and make a lot up to sell. If you want to see more spoon action, there's another episode of this show that you could go watch. And that one was called Fritters, My Bread and Butter. It just kind of goes through the uh, Fritz spoons and how I think we did a how fast can I do on, on the show. A timed, con a timed contest. Alright, so just heating this up piece is so long, I think I'm going to use my uh, heat pad for support. Yeah, we're good. There we go. Okay, so while it's still soft, I'm going to stop rotating and give it that sag. This one's got enough sag I could feasibly make uh, a bubbler chamber down there. Alright, 
flip it over, let's bulge and pop the ball hole. Pop it in the flame. Now we're gonna push a bowl. We'll get a bigger bowl push for this one. Gonna heat around the, and you can use your rod to help close the hole just a little bit if you need to, like that. Use it like a paddle. Just heating around that hole. Pop through to make it bigger. Sometimes I hold behind the ledge here for support. Go ahead and push that bowl. Alright, so now what's next? Does anyone remember? I do. How about we flatten the bottom next? Just making sure my bowl hole is the right size. Now's the time to adjust that. So if your bowl hole is massive, you need to go inside the bowl, just like I'm doing now, pinpoint flame, and you hold the bowl upside down. The whole pipe is upside down. So that the glass collapses in on itself, thus closing the hole. If you picture that bowl upside down, it collapses on itself. That's the way. So this one, I can't set this down and flatten it, so maybe I should put a hook on it to hang it, but I'll make an attempt here. I can set it down over here. Okay, now we're going to flatten the bottom. Beauty. Let's add a few dots. spins off me you're very more than welcome to do the three dots and Sebo was doing the three dots when I picked up the skill from him something we passed along there's a whole shitload of people on the Vancouver Island who we all learn from the same sources similar styles it's pretty fun so one of the last steps here is to pop the carb Now I suggest normally you put it in the kiln and then we'll remove that later. I think I can go ahead and remove it now. I'm just going to grab the old pipe by the middle here. So I just kind of went in slowly from the blow tube up to the mouthpiece, making sure it's not going to crack. I'm staying the heat on the very edge. I'm not going too far in. I was cleaning out a storage room the other day and found a box of CDs. This was a, a Ween mix when we started the show. I don't know what's going on now. There we go. One large spoon coming up, y'all. There we have it. Let's get that in the kiln. Time for 
for one more dab. Telephone, I'm not answering you. Ah. So, this dab is brought to you by Kind Selections. Oh yeah, I got me some Wampa Shatter. Now the Wampa was, uh, gosh, I can't remember, was it Paradise Seeds? Is that much I trying to remember? Lovely, lovely stuff. This one's very brittle. It's like, very brittle. So I just fastened it onto my dabber there. Oh, we're going to go through the nail thing again because I forgot to heat up the nail. So let's see if we can heat up my nail without cracking it. I'm always too impatient and put it in a too hot of a flame. So what I'm going to do is turn off my oxy pretty much all together. We'll just start with propane. can be spoiled too. Get your orders in. Check these guys out. Kind Selections online. Shattered Beard online. Uh, medical uh, patients clear across Canada. Get in touch. Alright, so I was thinking uh, we're just at an hour now. Maybe to close the show I'll make another spoon or two but this time more like real time spoon. Not the fastest spoon in the world but how about how about, you know, like, pretty fast. So, I'll show you how I make my frit spoons. This is a massive prep. This prep will make anywhere from two or four spoons in the two sizes I do. And to do that, I'm going to heat in. The frit is dumped in the inside of the tube, and it's just gathered in the handle. So the first step with these spoons is to close off the open pipe here the open tube. So I've got that closed, I've got my punty on. The next step is I'm going to dump the frit down in the end here. I'll take out my little plug that was holding the frit in. Make sure all the frit's out of that tube. If there's any frit in there, or powder, or any sketch, we'll rip that tube off and replace it later in the process. So now we're going to heat the tube up to get the frit to stick to the inside. This is what we'd do if this was opals, crushed opal. Although I've never done that, so I could be full of shit on that one. But I'm told that's what I do. Maybe we'll do that on a future show, a show on opals and crushed opal and opal application. So I'm just heating the tube, working my way from right to left, and basically getting it hot enough for the frit to stick on the inside. And I just keep working all the way, and if I put in the right amount of frit, I'll just have enough when I get to the end. If you're short, well, this end of the tube won't have as much in it. But I've made a few of these, and I think i got enough in there. So, let's remove this punty off this end. I'm going to pop a hole and replace that with a hollow tube. 
because what I've done here to save time is I've done two preps at the same time. I've worked enough frit in for two spoons or four or however many I want to pull off the end of this. But for today I'm going to pull off just two pipes off of this prep. I'm almost done making these. I gotta get this order done. I got a couple more to get to before Christmas. These guys placed their order when it was hot and sunny out, I'll tell you that. So now I'm just cutting the tube in half. And then we will proceed to make a spoon. A hand pipe. Alright. So there we have the two the same size. Da -dum -dum -dum. Kiln soaks at 1085 right now. So I got one of these preps, one in the kiln, one in hand. Let's do it, shall we? 12 step program. Bunty up. Hitting the middle part, making the shaft. It's slightly right of center towards the mouthpiece. Now with Frit, it's really important that I melt the glass in. It's got to get stage 3 liquid. You want the Frit to be smooth. It's got to be smooth on the inside of this pipe. Right now it's all jagged and chunky with little jagged bits of glass. And by melting it in smooth, those jagged little bits become little drops. And it shrinks and implodes up into the clear. So there we go. Pull it out very slowly. I'll flash a little bit of heat right here just to get it to pull out a little more the way I want. Like so. Now I'm going to heat the Maria. You could leave it just like it is, but I like a bulge there. Like I said, it kind of Rest nicely on the lips, prevents a tooth knockout. So by just heating that narrow spot, this is called the Maria. Now I'm going to puff and push at the same time, like so. I'll show that up to the camera, maybe. There you are. Now I gotta do the bowl end of things. So first we'll remove the punty and clean that end up as you remove that punty. Make sure there's no thick nipple or anything weird up in the end there. Now I'm holding the glass on an angle like this to gather the glass down. Gather it towards that ledge, gather up the bowl. A lot of glass blowing is actually glass gathering. So we're getting close. It is stage two liquid at least. Getting into three now. What is stage three liquid? Uh, that means fucking liquid on a honey on a stick. So if I spin it fast, you can make it narrower. If you slow down and let it sag, it gets longer. We'll just puff it out a bit. and give it a bit of a sag. So now I'm just going to heat up where the bowl goes, bulge and pop a hole. Got the whole pop, I'm gonna heat around that hole. About the size of a dime, maybe a nickel to a quarter. See back and forth, give it a pop. Perfect bull hole. 
bowl there. Just give it a little twist and a jab to make it bigger. I've also got a tool. This is essential for getting your bowl holes bigger. It's a needle nose pliers where I can reach in and spread the hole manually. It used to have a spring here, but the spring's long ago broken. But I still just hold it with my fingers like that so I can go in and pull out. I also have a brass octagonal reamer that fits down in there. And if you close the hole completely, you can open it with a tungsten pick. Michael Branty in the box I found today. Kind of fun. Alright, just gonna throw a few quick dots on this. And that's a pipe. There's a spoon. I made 55 of these the other day. Woo. Anyway, just about a lot. So just bulging, bulging and popping the uh, carb. There we have it. Another Fritz spoon for the people. I encourage you to get on it, get to work. Someone's got to make these things. Let's keep the uh, money and the product and the market in our local communities. There's no reason this has to be farmed overseas. We can build these things. Anyway, I'm going to have another dab. I'm just loving this. Uh, I want to thank you very much for joining the show today. I want to thank the sponsors, Vancouver Seed Bank, for giving me such amazing genetics all the time. And you can too, VancouverSeedBank.ca. I want to thank Kind Selections and Shatterbeard, two amazing companies, honest, trustworthy people making an honest, trustworthy product. Uh, so you can get your mail order medicine now and contact those two different companies, uh, unrelated. And uh, I, I do know them personally and they're dear friends of mine. So I think that's all I got to say, y'all. We'll see you next week. I think next week we're going to have a, a fun new episode. We're going to be live on location in Kelowna. Uh, I'm just got to confirm that one more time with the uh, Lee, the owner. But we're going to be at Hemp City in Kelowna. So if you're in the Kelowna area, come on down and visit uh, and say hello and check out. We're going to be doing a little show. We'll be doing the show from there. So come and meet and greet and have a good talk and, and have a good time. So. Thanks again for joining me, and uh, y'all have a good day now. Be safe. Cheers.